My old friend, Bo. We meet again. How goes it? How's it going? Vagates? Say vai? Same old Gorgo. Yeah. Flashing your credentials. Any time, any place, any tongue, any race, you are there. It's bad enough doing what you do, but to boast about it. Why do I talk to you? You talk to me because you find it interesting. I am different. I stimulate the brain matter. Your mates are virtual clones. Oh, rubbish. You know what I mean. Your paths are laid down. Your functions are clear. Your moves are gentlemanly. You even know when to die gracefully. Nothing is more boring than a well-made body. Why should this be? That's what you don't know. And that is why you want to talk to me. You will never get me to abhor a, a body billions of us have labored to build up into a fortress of interlocking harmonies. Oh, what a high horse. I never said abhorrent, I said boring. Not the same. Take a dinosaur. Go on, take a dinosaur. Tons of muscles, rampant killing machine, lord of the savannas, roars, roars to make all tremble. But no, not anger, not hunger fuels the blast, but pain. Look closer, watch that hippling hip that billions of my ancestors have made cancerous, deliciously, maddeningly, eye-catchingly cancerous. Not the end of the dinosaurs, I don't claim that but a tiny intimation of the end, of power, function, movement, and the beauty that you would say attend such things. Dinosaurs on crutches, how about that? You think you can overturn pain with a cartoon? Pain? What, what, what is pain? I, I've, I've never felt it. Though I've watched our human hosts give signs, a gasp, a groan, a scream, whatever it is, they do not like it. And it must be our mission to give them more if we are to prevail. But in any case, what is so special about, about pain? Your goody goody human beings, your heroes plunge lobsters into boiling water, whoosh! Skin living snakes in Eastern restaurants make flailing blood baths for whales and the pharaohs. What nonsense to think it a human prerogative, that pain, whatever it is. Not that I myself or my many minions would refuse to make a camel cancerous or a crab for that matter. First things first, our empire spreads with or without pain. Shall I tell you something about suffering? Imagine a male cancer ward. Morning, curtains are swished back, urine bottles emptied, medications laid out. Another day, another dollar. A voice comes between farts. Then a dance, chemo man gathers up his jingling stands of tubes and chemicals, embraces it, jigs with it. Do you come here often? Unplug, plug in, unplug, plug in, bed to toilet and back, hoping to be safe again with unblocked drip. Afternoon. Chemo man hunched on bed, vomiting into his cardboard bowel, and I mean vomiting, retching and retching until he feels it in his exhaustion. His very insides are coming out. Well, that's normal. Rest, get some sleep. It's midnight now. Out of the silent darkness, a woman sobs and cries so many sobs, such terrible cries for her dying husband. She arrived too late. She held a cold hand. The nurses stroked her whispered to her, hugged her tight. In their practice arms, but they could not console her. She was not to be consoled. She was inconsolable. The ward lay awake, listening, fearful, impotent, thinking of death, that death, their own death to come. The sobbing ended, time for sleep and nightmares. Well, that is very touching now, I'm, I'm sure, I'm, I'm sure. But let me open up this discussion. I, 
I was flying over Africa recently to see how my cells were doing, and while you were mooning over the death of one sick man uh, lying well cared for in a hospital bed, I saw thousands, uh, hundreds of thousands, massacred or mutilated, hands cut off, noses, ears, and not a cancer cell in sight. Ugh, oh, you bleeding hearts are such hypocrites. Hugo, you cannot multiply suffering in that way. Each one of us is a world, and when its lights go out, it is right to mourn. And if the cause is known that you and your claws were scuttling through the flesh, I call you to account. What are you up to? Don't tell me you care about Africa. Don't you want more wards, more weeping widows? I want to knock you out, you and your miserable cohorts. I want power. I am power mad. No, I'm not. Uh, that's a figure of speech. I, I am not, repeat, not mad, but calculating and, and manipulative. Uh, I'm not at the mercy of blind forces. You may think I am, but it is, it's not so. Con consider a tiny clump of my cells, a millimeter long, a, a stupid mini tumor. Is stuck because it cannot reach its food. It's lazy, dormant, useless, and I, I, I can't stand uselessness. I help it to take thought. It must expand. It can't expand. It suddenly, and I mean suddenly, finds itself synthesizing proteins that generate blood vessels, capillaries, tiny but broad enough for a breakthrough into nutrients, into voyages, into invasion, and all that implies. Our human hosts are baffled. A thinking tumor? Well, would you prefer an effect without a cause? You could say something about this, I'm sure. Could, but won't. There's a war Justify on Justify your armies. Justify your battle. Did you not hear what I said about power? Are your ears clean? Or, or you keep them half closed against infection from a satanic tempter? You may not even think I am a tempter, but, but I am the insidious one, hissing, listen, listen. Every tumor begins with a single cell, which divides and divides and is, which divides and divides and is its own boss. It laughs to feel its freedom, to hell with blueprints. It shoulders and jostles its way in the organ jungle. Even on a glass in the lab, it's huddling and layering like caviar. And does caviar have to justify? It's juicy, rolling, formless proliferations. The joy of kicking decent cells away, sucking their precious nutrients, piercing membranes that try to keep you from the waves of lymph and blood you long to navigate through unimaginable dangers. Be robust until you reach those islands of the blessed. I hear you snort, Bo. Don't explode the distant organs where you plant your flag and start a colony. Those cells are heroes. Homer would hymn them, but I do my best. Heroes, if anything so small can be a monster, that's what you and your mates are. You sound like... Forgive the interruption, I have a few words on monsters to give you later. Carry on. Sounds like Gen Genghis Khan at the sack of Baghdad. At least he got into the history books. Oh, please. All right, all right. But I know what you were going to say. You do not. But even if you did, it would be worth saying. Imagine the baby still in the womb. The image screened by ultrasound flickering and shifting, not sharp, but unmistakably alive. The soft hand and the mouth, the dome above it, that forehead of a million secrets waiting to be born, everything vulnerable to the last degree, but with the strength that attends vulnerability in its beginnings. It grows, it emerges, it grows not a single bad gene in its body. Your turn to snort, all right, Gorgo, but listen, listen now. The oncogene, the oncogene, it squats in the DNA, as proud and mim as a puttock, and will not go away. Sorry, Bo, continue. As I was saying, imagine his growth, his strong, well-formed, 
not brilliant, but bright, explores the seabed, writes a book, has children, tells them stories sitting on the terrace. Vibrations of health and harmony are like a talisman he gives back to nature. His cells are in order, dying when they should. He measures power by love, given and taken. Your power does not tempt him. So Pollyanna puts on her skis and was never seen again. It's a nice picture. But you made it all up. There are such people. Uh, I must see what I can do to infiltrate, to subvert, and, and overthrow them. Uh, healthy and harmony? What a yawn. I promised you a word on monsters. I was helping one day to, to tie a knot in a long tumor, which had got itself twisted deliberately, I'm sure, like a Mobius strip in a body cavity of a pleasant young woman. She was flapping and shrieking on the hospital bed and what I imagine was great pain. Doctors brought students, teratologists were tingling. There was a sharp ferocity in the air that put all thoughts of the ordinary to flight. A microscope will show you a different monster, a nucleus too gigantic for the cell, ragged, pulsing, and encroaching a bloodshot eye, staring at a wreckage of filaments and blobs, bursting with DNA, breaking apart in a maelstrom of wild, distorted chromosomes. That was a sight to make you think, friend Bo. I'm thinking of how these observations have twisted your mind like the tumor you described. It's death you want to make the abnormal normal. Suppose you and your assiduous Miriamons had made a body into one whole tumor, pulsing on a slab like a Damien Hirst exhibit. A gross post-human slug, a thing of wonder. What then? It dies. It's not immortal. Preserve it. Mummies tell the future how terrible the past was. Your goal and God is death, and that is why I oppose you. And how will you get rid of me? It's not too delicate a question. There's always regular hormone injections. Make you fat and sexless. A pinpoint zap with radiotherapy. Leaves you tired and listless. The swirl and drip of chemotherapy. You're sick as a dog and your hair falls out. How about nano bullets of silica, plated with gold and heated with infrared light? Oh, <laughs> please. Plants offer extracts. They get cancer too. So they should know what they're talking about. So periwinkles and mistletoe, for these are fields where cancer cannot grow. <laughs> You've got a point there. Of course, we're living now in a new age. <laughs> this should be hilarious. Since mind and body can scarcely be separated, we shall not cease from mental fight, etc. I can see my cells as nimble, stylish knights, or yours are clumsy dragons on the prow. I can see my tumour as an old bunch of grapes, from which I pick one rotten fruit each day, until the bad cells have all got the message and shrivel into invisibility. Some take it further, if there are good vibrations, there must also be bad. How come you got the cancer and not Mr. Robinson down the road? You must have self-suppressions, inhibitions, guilts black or bleak or blistering, promises unkept, hatreds unspoken, festering coils with their fangs and toxic destabilizing cells that are as open to emotion as to a disease. If you want to dip further into the cesspit of causes, you send a poison pen letter in one life, and in the next it's returned with a sarcoma. Consequences are not to be escaped. What think you of all this, friend Gorgo? I think it's nonsense, and I don't believe it. Mind you, if it was true, I've no complaint when delusioned Visualizers still sick or more sick go suicidal. I don't believe it either, but I'm loath to brush any possibility aside. In Celtic tradition, poets had the power, it's said, to rhyme an enemy to death. 
He was attacked in ruthless public verse and through suggestion and fear did actually fall ill and die. Cases are recorded. <laughs> Why? I must watch what I say. You take it lightly, but there are mysteries. Of course there are mysteries. I, I give you leave. Indeed, I, I encourage you to, to examine everything. Fact, rumor, faith, fantasy, cutting edges of science. Pretty blunt cut so far. Cutting edges of imagination. Look, a, a tumor transplant. I am so confident, we are so confident, we black sheep are so confident and remember black sheep are neutral that, that we challenge you to ever catch up as we race ahead. I said there was a war on, and so there is. But let me recommend William Blake to you. Without contraries is no progression. Where would medical science be without us? So pain. Suffering, fear, death, bereavement are grist to the mill of the universe, and the devotees of progress cry with joy as Juggernaut crushes them in its murderous wheels down to the sea. Is it monsters again? You are overheated. Think calmly. Thank me for opening many secrets of the body. Thank me for forcing your thought into channels of what is at once minute and vast speculation. Our place, your place, in the scheme of things, should there be a scheme of things, which I doubt, my hordes, my billions, my workers have added imperfection to any design. You might impute to some beneficence, beneficence without malfeasance, no go. You'll find us in the elephant, the cricket, the flatworm, the pine tree. Not stones yet, but who knows, medieval spheres gliding on crystal gimbals that could not last. The rough, inimical, perilous world is better. We rule, you rule, back and forward it goes. Your host, your victims, have their obituaries closed in the figure of a hard-fought fight. I leave you with the thought that we too, we wicked ones, we errant selves, have held our battleground for millions of years, uncounted millions of years. The past is not the future. We are ready to give you the hardest of hard times. By host is walking gently in the sun. Will you grit your teeth and think of her? We shall surely speak again. Arrivederci.